Not so long ago, mines and factories were still being operated across our region. With their closure, prosperity gave way to unemployment and its accompanying problems. Retraining, regeneration and innovation are now vital for these former industrial heartlands and six partners have decided to work together based on their shared heritage. The same difficult economic background, a densely populated region, but also, and specifically, one which features vast zones of exceptional biodiversity and landscapes. A thorough regeneration of post-industrial landscapes is now needed. As part of a European programme called We Can, launched in March 2010, these six partners are sharing their ideas and experience to transform their natural heritage into a catalyst for economic growth to benefit the local population. We try to collaborate together, find new solutions on how uh, regions with a post-industrial history, but also how it is possible to find new financing uh, uh, methods to provide extra benefits for the community, but also for biodiversity. This weekend project is for us an opportunity to reach uh, new target groups, people that don't go out uh, to go for a walk in the forest, and we try to find schemes to welcome them on an attractive way. Through the We Can programme, we are trying to set up new approaches that we would not otherwise have had the opportunity to exploit if the opportunity had not been opened up by the Interreg 4 programme. Through four main themes called work packages, the We Can partners use their skills and expertise to find innovative and duplicable solutions on a European scale. We are looking very closely at the project and what it can achieve for communities in Wales because it's learning new lessons that we can take on board into the Living Wales programme and the approach that we would want to replicate elsewhere in Wales. The goal of the programme is to develop new initiatives and ideas around the subjects we are tackling but also to tackle new subjects and learn about new ideas. In particular, we are looking at environmental mediation, relationships with local populations, as well as conflicts for use of space. The ideal solution is to allow inhabitants, by which we mean farmers, teachers, members of associations, citizens generally, to get involved in actively preserving our biodiversity. First and foremost comes cooperation, sharing experiences. This is very important because there are really so many things we can learn from our neighbours. We have the same shared values, but we also share the same difficulties. This allows us to find out how our neighbours do things, how they react when faced with these problems, what measures they can implement, how they work together with their institutions and what solutions they provide. I really love working uh, in this sort of European projects uh, because it adds to, uh, to the international atmosphere uh, that I really like to meet people from other countries, to learn about other people, other nationalities and to work together on uh, similar subjects that you, you can learn from each other and you actually become also a big family, uh, a group of friends, people that really uh, know that uh, in all the countries people are doing similar things and that, that's really nice. I think the dissemination is far more important because what we learned here and the mistakes we made in the past and now finding new solutions can be a really an asset for other parts in Europe. Central to the Weekend programme is the economic dimension and the involvement of private corporations and inhabitants acting as guiding lights for all initiatives taken. The partners, working within a work group coordinated by the Belgium Park, are looking at the economic value of the surrounding natural heritage beyond its mere aesthetic value. Well, uh, when you want to uh, convince politicians that uh, nature conservation is important, then you have to prove that it has also an economic benefit. And that's what uh, Work Package 1 is all about. It's about 
about proving that uh, having a nice forest in your neighborhood is not just nice for butterflies and birds. It's not just um, a nice area to walk in, but it's also uh, important for a local community to have um, and to use this natural heritage uh, to their uh, economical benefits. Nous avons mis en place we have set up workshops in two districts, bringing together councillors, local farmers, those involved in the local tourist economy, and with them we have tried to identify the various assets that the grasslands represent in these areas. WeCan's philosophy is to utilise the economy to protect the environment and develop the region. Our natural spaces are actively participating in attracting visitors to our region and a large number of these are contributing to initiatives to promote and raise awareness of environmental issues. This also highlights their importance. Imagine in the future, for example, if there were even more of us involved in preserving our natural regional heritage. This is one of the major goals shared by the partners of WeCan backed by regional natural spaces. With the experience of corporate sponsorship contributing to funding certain actions, ENRX is working to set up a regional biodiversity fund. We still retain a historic partnership with the Caisse d'Epargne Bank, which has supported us in running an educational programme destined for the region's children. It's true that this experience has motivated us to go further. We have worked in partnership with the region, conducting a feasibility study on a regional sponsorship fund to find out whether it's possible to get companies and citizens involved in initiative to promote biodiversity. The Belgian partners have set up an environmental foundation over the past few years. The Welsh partners are experimenting with private sector projects. Sponsorship, foundations and endowment funds are just some of the approaches developed by the WeCam partners to promote and encourage exchanges and reviews. We have three different approaches, all derived from the same philosophy, which is to try to get private sector support. My aim is to raise private funds to do more and to do it better. There are many issues that concern us all, including our children, who carry our future hopes for the protection of nature. We really want WeCan to be a beacon in terms of how the natural environment can promote all those benefits, not just to businesses, but to communities and to people, and I say especially young people, our future. With its programme of environmental education, Objectif Nature, launched 25 years ago, ENRX has demonstrated the strength and durability of partnerships with responsible businesses. This operation gives nature presentations to 30,000 schoolchildren throughout the region. This programme would never have existed and lasted so long without the tireless involvement of its partners. The Ministry of Education, Europe, the Nord Pas de Calais region and the North France Europe arm of the Caisse d'Epargne Bank. What has made ENRX what it is today also forms the genetic makeup of the Caisse d'Epargne, that is, a deep-rooted attachment to the region. It is truly an important point for us. We live for and with the region. I'd also add that there is also a notion of pooling and transfer of skills and values. I think that's also part of what brings us together, and I think it at least partly explains why we are here now, celebrating 25 years of the partnership. What is unique about this partnership is that it is actually sustainable year after year. It has survived the great changes in the Caisse d'Epargne, which has grown and merged, but which has never abandoned the ENRX. The aim of environmental education is to teach children to act positively, whether in their relationship with nature or their daily habits and their own health. The habits we wanted them to change were clearly explained to them. We also explained why we wanted to promote these changes and I think this gave meaning to the environmental initiative, stimulating them in their own behaviour as eco-citizens. These children are the future citizens of the planet. Building on these values, Objectif Nature is a prime example of how sponsorship can innovate, raise awareness, educate and act to sustainably preserve our natural heritage.
adopter quelqu'un. Adopting someone or a species means living with them. It's as simple as that. We are setting up real initiatives together with awareness raising to show how important this wildlife is and how it can only survive if it has a habitat. This is done primarily by projects to plant and create green spaces and a favorable habitat for animal species in our region. The Rouen black cherry tree is typical of the Avenois Tierrache region and bears these deliciously sweet and succulent heart-shaped black cherries each July. To encourage the replantation of the Rouen black cherry tree in its gardens and orchards and therefore preserve and promote the genetic heritage of local species, the Avenois Regional Natural Park, together with the support of the Rouen district, has decided to launch a campaign for local residents to adopt fruit trees. The campaign aims to reintroduce ancient varieties which are on the verge of disappearing in private arenas, i.e. by Joe Bloggs planting them in his garden. This operation is important because it represents the reappropriation of fruit heritage by the inhabitants themselves. They are adopting it. After several stages of raising awareness among inhabitants, the technicians working with the Avenois Regional Natural Park visited Rouen to give the plants to eight adoptive Rouenois residents. Today was the day on which the plants were presented to the residents, and so we also did a demonstration plantation to explain to people how to plant this tree. They were then awarded a certificate of adoption of the local variety. This initiative is part of the operation entitled Let's Plant Our Scenery. Since 1983, the region's population can order plants from a catalogue of almost 150 species of trees, shrubs and fruiting varieties adapted to the soil and climate of the Nord Pas de Calais. I think it is vitally important because we need to reintroduce all these trees which are becoming rare or disappearing altogether from our landscapes. It's important for our children and our grandchildren to be able to find the trees that have always existed and also to eat natural fruit. Thanks to these adoption projects, each of us can act positively in our immediate environment to encourage beautiful landscapes, to preserve regional heritage and to enrich biodiversity. Numerous other initiatives are also being created thus proving how effective it is to act locally. A panda gîte is a gîte located in the heart of a natural regional park carrying the Gîte de France label, but whose owners are committed to protecting the environment. How? Here is an innovative example created within Theme 3 of the Weekend Programme. Natural regional spaces and the natural regional parks of Scarpescourt and Avenois have been experimenting within the new Weekend Programme with a new and innovative experiment in partnership with Pandagites to give tourists access to electric bikes to promote accessibility, eco-mobility and development of sports and outdoor activities while enjoying short cycling trails. Le parc a acheté des vélos the park has also bought bikes which are loaned to guests staying in the Panda Gites. This is not a bike hire service, but is what is known as a visitor payback scheme, which gives visitors the option of making a voluntary financial contribution and guarantees that the money they give will be reinvested into initiatives to promote biodiversity. This could be, for example, the creation of a pond at the Panda Gites, in the Jeet's garden, or the plantation of regional shrubs, or the creation of nesting boxes. This is truly a voluntary initiative. Donations from tourists are one of the main ideas from think tank number three of the Weekend programme. We try our visitors to voluntarily donate something to a nature reserve. Now, um, we all know the traditional visitor payback systems. That means that you pay for a guided walk or you pay for a walking map or maybe there's a donation box. We all know that. Um, but we thought about the new technology to use. Uh, everyone now has a smartphone, you have iPads, there's the internet, there's Facebook, Twitter, etc. Um, so we're working together on a couple of pilots 
to implement. In the regional natural parks of Scarpesco and Avenois, the idea of making electric bikes available was quickly adopted by the owners of the Panda Gites, who are the lucky ambassadors of the natural local treasures. Ce sont les gites panda qui ont, euh, the Panda Gites, which voluntarily accepted the idea of being equipped with electrically assisted bikes to allow them to discover the area using a gentle mode of transport, an alternative to the car, a non-polluting method of locomotion that enables a user to fully enjoy all the treasures of our region. Pandajits are labelled by the WWF to promote the observation of nature and relations with the public and local producers. The goal now is to promote and encourage this approach, to incite visitors to leave their cars behind and to travel around the area by electrically assisted bicycle to go shopping, to the market, to discover a museum or simply to go for a ride. At Terni, Brigitte and Guy Meilleville invite their guests to try local producers. What is important here, in this sheet, is be, to be able to show that you can eat naturally, therefore working with local producers, showing people how nature feeds us and how to live in harmony with the village's producers is a learning process for both adults and children. Brigitte and Guy offer a cycle route between both parks. This route encompasses 80 kilometers in total of the region's most beautiful cycle paths. The aim of this circuit is to introduce visitors to both the Scarpe Escal and the Avenois parks. Long distances can also be very easily covered to take in the village and the surrounding scenery. Elisabeth and Jacques Tondeur, also owners of a Panda Gite, are sharing this passion for a different way to discover the natural wonders of the regional natural park. They want to recreate a connection with nature. When people come, they can spot birds all along the footpaths, the emerald footpaths or greenway, either on donkeys or using the electrically assisted bikes or simply by walking them. Our region is a real gem. People who have never ridden a bicycle or have only a little experience or those not in the best of health, it's a very easy option. The electrical assistance means that you don't have to pedal too much. The advantage is that you can ride or walk along these footpaths for almost a whole day. You can also have a picnic or stop in one of the surrounding small restaurants or go and buy your bread, meats or cheeses from local farms. We are all eco-citizens now and this system of electric bicycles made available to the public means that if they want a short trip to the Avenois, they can take their bike and come here and eat our delicious local products. Eco-mobility also means contact, encounters with people and nature. Getting to know nature is really important. They are known as rangers in Belgian Flanders and eco-guards in the regional natural park of Scarpesco. As part of the weekend programme since 2010, they have shared our projects, practices to promote natural and mining heritage or even to educate the public on environmental matters. We need to engage communities and involve people, local inhabitants in their local natural environment as well hope to learn a lot from our French and Belgian partners in those respects and so these visits are absolutely vital to exchange information and learn more. So we hope that by bringing the rangers and the echo guards across uh, we will be able to understand how they do things and how we do things and improve our activities both in France, Belgium and also here in Wales. We have lots of social issues here in the valleys, unemployment, um, low educational skills and ill health. So we believe that the environment can act to try to solve those problems and by getting communities active in their natural environment it's a way of addressing and helping to solve those problems. So that's the, the higher level as opposed to just the visits as well. Although they have different statutes, the rangers and the eco-guards share the same passion for nature, for protecting and promoting it. So the rangers are a group of volunteers who guide people to the national park and give information. We can function like a host 
to welcome people and to be enthusiastic about nature and the national park. And so we hope to learn about how can you speak about your heritage, about the heritage of your region. In the Scarpesco Regional Natural Park, five eco-guards patrol the park territory all year round. The guards have three main missions, surveillance, prevention and alert across the whole territory. Their objective is to bring technical support to local councillors, local communities and also to local populations, raising awareness and presenting the region to a younger audience as well as an adult one. This is a valuable link between local communities and the natural environments which surround them. They play a vital role in raising awareness about protecting the environment through presentations and nature training days in schools. We often visit schools to explain to children what the park is about and the fact that there is an echo guard, what their job is, and that the natural environment gives them employment. Why not confront the realities of our own terrain and our initiatives through both these patrollers, echo guards in France and rangers in Flanders and Wales? We have learned many new things through the WeCan programme. You will also discover the Junior Echo Guards, an idea launched through the WeCan program. Ça fait partie des sujets euh, et des idées qui sont issues du, du programme WeCan. The Echo Guards of the Scarpesco Regional Natural Park wanted to introduce an experimental Junior Ranger training project, a training program for juniors with pupils from the CM1, CM2 classes of the Michel Fugain School in Vray. On a pu constater. We noticed, especially in Anglo-Saxon countries, that there are a lot of Junior Rangers. They call this Junior Rangers Training, and we said, why not try to adapt this to our own regions? That's why we call it Junior Echo Guards. This is a real educational journey we are offering them, tackling many issues. We take a class, and for a whole year we introduce them to nature in five phases, the first being an explanation of what a park is and what an Echo Guard is. The second phase of the training programme for junior eco-guards aims to teach the children to recognise a few tree species, including the silver willow, which is emblematic of the Scarpesco area. After some theoretical background in class, the school children, accompanied by the eco-guards, put their newly acquired knowledge into practice, in particular near the communal lake. They planted a row of seven willow branches which will become impressive sylvan willow trees, the ultimate repositories of biodiversity. I think that they discover a job that is essential to nature. Because the child is not a simple observer, they are also an active participant, which adds an extra dimension. They become more aware of the role that they can play as a future eco-citizen, that is, the preservation of nature. They now understand that their involvement in nature is vital and that they need nature as much as nature needs them.